Good evening everyone. I welcome you all to the problem solving session of the NPTEL course on thermodynamics. I am Prithi Vilabha. I am one of the DA for this course. So today I have some problems uh, from the assignment of uh, week 9 and then I have some problems related to entropy and uh, heat engine refrigeration cycle and so on. So the first problem is which of the following is the correct expression for Clausius uh, inequality. So we know it is uh, del Q integral del Q by D should be less than or equal to 0. So that is <coughs> option B. Uh, which of the following is or are not uh, correct statements? So Clausius first is Clausius inequality is valid for reversible cycles only. So that is not correct because it is valid for uh, reverse, irreversible cycles also. Uh, Clausius inequality is valid for irreversible cycles. So that is true and we are asked for the not correct ones. And Clausius inequality is not valid for a refrigeration cycle that is false because it is valid for refrigeration cycles as well. And Clausius inequality is valid for irreversible cycles only. That is also not correct because uh, that is valid for both reversible and irreversible cycles. The next problem: consider amount, uh, consider a unit mass of a substance which is undergoing a reversible process from state one to state two. During the process, it gains an amount of thermal energy Q from its surrounding, which are at a temperature T. If the entropy of the substances, uh, substance is S1 at state 1 and S2 at state 2, the entropy change of the substance delta S during this process is dash. So, you know, uh, delta S is given by S2 minus S1. So delta two delta s is given by s two minus s one. So option C is right. Next problem: a block of mass uh, twelve kg and average specific heat of uh, three kilojoule per kilogram in degree Celsius is cooled from thirty five degrees to five degrees Celsius. The entropy change of the block is dash joule per degree Celsius. So we have mass as twelve kg. Specific heat capacity is three kilojoule per kilogram degree Celsius, and uh, T one is thirty five degree Celsius, and T two is five degree Celsius. Hello. Uh, if uh, I think you have uh, you are my computer. So you can mute it and uh, if you have any questions or concern then you can unmute and talk. So now um, delta S is delta Q by T. And delta Q is given by M C delta T. DT by T. So now if you want to integrate this, you can have uh, M C as constant. M C DT by T integral. So this is delta S. T2 by T1. Here M is 12 and C is uh, 3000 joules per kilogram degree Celsius and uh, ln of T2 by T1 is uh, should be in Kelvin scale. So this is 35 degree Celsius is 308 Kelvin and similarly 5 degree Celsius is uh, 278 Kelvin. So this is 
here um, the it is 270 is the final temperature and initial is 300 degrees. then we will get minus 3689 joule per degree Do you have any questions? Next problem. An ideal gas which is initially at temperature T undergoes a reversible isothermal process from pressure P1 to pressure P2 while using Q amount of heat to the surroundings which is at a temperature T. If the gas constant of the gas is R, the entropy change of the gas per unit mass delta S during the processes. So it is given that it is an isothermal process, reversible isothermal process and uh, the pressure is changing from P1 to P2. So this delta S is R one, two one, and two. So that is option C. Next, uh, diatomic gas. Uh, given uh, gamma is equal to 1 is compressed from 25 degree celsius to and uh, 7.5 meter cube per degree per kilogram to 0.75 meter cube uh, per kg in a reversible adiabatic manner the temperature of the gas after compression is uh, dash degree celsius so here we can write uh, t2 by t1 equal to v1 by v2 power uh, 1.4 minus 1 so that is gamma minus 1 and this is uh, v1 is 7.5 v2 is 0.75 power 0.4 so this is 10 power 0.4 so t2 is t1 into t1 is uh, 25 degree celsius so this is 298 kelvin so we have 298 into 10 power 24. That is 740.5 Kelvin. We wanted in degrees uh, Celsius, so that is 475.5 degrees Celsius. Next problem, a uh, 2 meter cube insulated rigid tank contains 2 kg of carbon dioxide at uh, 200 kilopascal. Now paddle wheel work uh, is done on the system until the pressure in the tank rises to 350 kilopascal. The entropy change of carbon dioxide during this process is dash uh, joule per kilo. So we know for a general process delta S is uh, Cv ln T2 by T1 plus R ln V2 by V1. Now we want uh, T2 by T1 and uh, for V2 by V1 V2 by V1 will become 0 because the volume is constant, it is a uh, rigid tank. Now we need to find T2 by T1. So We have ideal state equation PV equal to MRT. 
so we can say PV by MRT is equal to 1 so P1 P1 by M1 RT1 is equal to P2 P2 by M2 RT2 so here R, R can get cancelled M1 and M2 are same so it will be it will get cancelled and similarly B1 and B2 will also get cancelled so we are left with pressure and temperatures uh, we want T2 by T1 so T2 by T1 will be P2 by P1 so P2 is given as 350 kilopascal and P1 is 200 kilopascal so we will get uh, 1.75 now delta S is equal to CV into the only the first term will be there because the second term uh, ln of 0 is uh, sorry ln of 1 is 0 so for delta S equal to CV into CV is uh, given as 657 into ln of T2 by T1 that is 1.75 This is 367.67 uh, joule per kilogram Kelvin. So the mass is given as so for capital for the entire mass the change in entropy is can be given as m into uh, delta s small delta s. So that is m is 2 and into 367.67. This is 735.3 joule per kilogram. Do you have any questions? problem we have 1.85 kilogram of nitrogen gas an ideal diatomic gas is combined is contained in a piston cylinder device having pressure of uh, 185 kilopascal and a temperature of 18.5 degrees Celsius the gas is now compressed slowly in a polytropic process during which uh, PV power 1.85 is equal to constant the process ends when the volume is reduced to 0.85 times the original volume the entropy change of nitrogen gas during this process is uh, dash joule per kilo Kelvin. So uh, you can write the given data. Mass is uh, 1.85 kilogram, and uh, initial pressure P1 is 185 kilopascal. P2, sorry, uh, T1 is 18.5 degrees Celsius and this in, we can convert into Kelvin scale and that will be 291.5 Kelvin and the process follows is PV power is given by the, the process is given by PV power 1.85 is equal to constant. And the process ends when the volume is reduced to uh, 0.85 times the original volume. That means V2 is 0.85 times the original volume, that is V1. Now the change in entropy during the process has to be found. So change in entropy is given by uh, capital S uh, is given by uh, Cv long T2 by T1 plus R long. So here we know the change in volume V2 by V1 is known, uh, but T2 by T1 is uh, not known, so that can be found out. From the polytopic process, we know T2 by T1 is equal to uh, V 
1 by d2 power uh, n minus 1. So here uh, v1 by v2 will be so here v2 by v1 will be 0.85. So v1 by v2 will be 1 by 0.85. And the process or uh, the n is uh, 1.85, so then we will have 0.85. So t2 is okay, so we want only the ratio. This is 1.148. Now, uh, we don't know the value of R and CB and uh, only the data given is that it is nitrogen. So we can calculate the uh, CB and the uh, ln value for nitrogen. Uh, so since it, it is a diatomic gas, that says gamma is 1.4. R is universal gas constant by molecular weight of uh, nitrogen. So uh, universal gas constant is 8314 and molecular weight is uh, molecular weight of nitrogen is 28. Then we can calculate the value of R. So that is uh, 296.93 joule per now we know CP minus CV is R and gamma is uh, CP by CV. So using this we can calculate the value of CV. So from here I can write CV is CP by gamma and from here I can write uh, CV is equal to CP minus R and CP from sorry I have to write this in. CP is equal to gamma CV so then I can have gamma into CV minus R so this will be uh, 1 minus gamma of CV is equal to minus R so CV will be R by gamma minus 1 so R is 296.93 and gamma minus 1 will be 0.4 so we can calculate we can calculate the value of C V that is 742.3 uh, joule per kg kg is equal to uh, CV ln T2 by T1 plus R ln T2 by T1. So CV is uh, 742.3 ln of T2 by T1 is uh, 1.148 and R is 296.93 and V2 by V1 is given as uh, 0.85. Can you calculate this value for the change in entropy? can we calculate this value and you can unmute an answer or you can also type in the chat box.
आंसर इज फिफ्टी फोर पॉइंट दो जो फिर किलोग्राम के लिए एंड फॉर द एंटायर एंट्रोपी फॉर द एंटायर मास डिसमिन टू डेल्टा सो एम एस टू इसके एस टू सॉरी वन पॉइंट एट फाइव So this turns out to be hundred point two seven joule per kilo. Do you have any questions? Okay, is there no problem? Uh, no questions. I will move to the next problem. In the next problem: An irre irreversible heat engine is uh, receiving thermal energy at a rate of uh, 200 kilowatt. Uh, so that means from the drawing, so this is 200 kilowatt Q source, uh, which is at 1000 kelvin, and rejecting thermal energy at a rate of 150 kilowatt to a sink which is at a temperature of 500 kelvin. So this is 150 kilowatt. Uh, consider a hypothetical situation where the irreversible heat engine has transformed into a reversible heat engine with the same work output. And the first question is the magnitude of rate of heat transfer from the source after modification is dash watts. So now we know W uh, can be written as Q in minus Q out, and that is 200 minus 150. That is W is. 50 kilowatt. So this is the work output of the irreversible heat engine. Now, if it is converted to a reversible heat engine with the same work output, this will be again the same work output for the reversible heat engine as well. And now we need to find the to uh, uh, extract this work and uh, from the given source and sink temperatures, we need to find the rate of heat transfer from the uh, source. So uh, we can first calculate the efficiency. Efficiency. Uh, efficiency can be written as one minus T uh, two by T one, that is uh, temperature of source by sink. Sorry, sink by source. So this is one one minus five hundred by thousand, and that will be fifty percent. And uh, efficiency can be also written as work output by the energy that given in. So I would write uh, Q in dash. So to represent the uh, Uh, reversible heat engine from the previous given, and uh, now this is given as 50%. That is 0.5, mm, and we know the the value of W also. That is the same as the previous case. So Q in dash is equal to uh, work output by 0.5 of the efficiency. Work output is 50 kilowatt, and the efficiency is 0.5. That is 100 kilowatt. So to write this in watts, we will have hundred thousand watts. I hope this is clear. In the next uh, question, the magnitude of the rate of heat transfer to the sink after modification. So uh, now we have Q in dash is equal to W plus sorry Q out dash plus W. And uh, uh, we know the values of uh, uh, Q in and W. Q in dash is should be equal to Q in dash minus W. That is 100 minus 50 kilowatt. That is 50 kilowatt or 50,000 watts. So we have 50,000. Do you have any questions?
Okay, if you do not have any questions, I can move on to the next uh, problem. Water flows through a turbine in which uh, friction causes the water temperature to rise from 35 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius. If there is no heat transfer, how much does the entropy of the water change in passing through the turbine? Water is incompressible and the process can be taken to be a constant volume. So, for a constant volume incompressible flow, we can write this as delta S is integral uh, d cube by d yes. so here uh, d q is capital d q plus so delta s is equal to mc into integral dt by t. So this is so b uh, m is not so okay. M for the we will take a specific change in internal a uh, specific change in entropy. So for uh, C we have one four point one four into one of d2 by t1 and uh, here t1 is 35 degrees Celsius that is 308 Kelvin and t2 is 37 that is 310 Kelvin then we have 4.14 round of t2 by t1, t2 is 310 by 300. So delta is, is 0 0.02708 kilojoule per per kilogram. This is 27 kg. So this is the specific change in entropy. Do you have any questions? Problem a piston cylinder device contains a liquid vapor uh, mixture of water at 300 Kelvin during a constant pressure process. 750 kJ of heat is transferred to the water uh, during the constant pressure process. 750 kJ of heat is transferred to the water as a result, part of the liquid in the cylinder vaporizes, determine the entropy change of the water during this process. So, Here delta S is to be found out, and this is now it is by T, and that is uh, since the temperature is constant and the total energy is also given, we can have del Q S L T kilojoule by 300 Kelvin. So this is 2.5 kilojoule per kilo. One kg of water at 273 Kelvin is brought into contact with the heat reservoir at uh, 373 Kelvin. When the 
when the water has reached 373 Kelvin, find the entropy change of the water, uh, water of the reservoir, water and of the reservoir, uh, heat reservoir and of the universe. So, first, uh, to solve the first problem, we can We you know delta S yes, equal to integral delta Q by T and that is from C T by T. So here M and C will be constant. So delta for the capital S. Uh, delta S we have M C into T T by T starting from T1 to So we we know value of M is one, one kg is given, and C for water is four point one eight seven and one of three seven. So this is the change in entropy of the water. So this is 1.307 kJ per kg. Now we can calculate the change in entropy for the reservoir. And that is again we will have Q by T. And here the temperature of the reservoir is constant, so it is simple as uh, delta Q by T. Delta Q by T. Now uh, delta Q is M C uh, delta T. That is. Uh, M is 1 kg and C is 4.17 into delta T is uh, 100 because it is 3, 273 Kelvin to 373 So this will be 408.7 uh, kJ. So this is the uh, heat that is transferred. Now entropy change of the reservoir is uh, 4.1 delta Q by T that is 418.7 divided by the temperature of the reservoir which is 373. So this turns out to be 1.1225 kJ per kilo per kilo. Now we have the entropy change of uh, reservoir and the uh, water body as well, so we can calculate the uh, entropy change of the universe. So entropy change for the universe is entropy change of the water body plus entropy change of the reservoir. So now. Uh, uh, for the reservoir it is uh, negative because the heat is taken away from the reservoir so we will have negative here and uh, for the water we calculated as 1.307 minus 1 1.1225 So this is 0 0.1845 kJ per Kelvin. So this is the change in entropy for the universe in this case. 
now uh, as a part of the I mean, second part of the problem is to uh, find if the water is heated from 273 to 373 by first bringing in contact with the reservoir at uh, 323 kelvin and then with the reservoir at uh, 373 kelvin so they want to heat it in two steps using two reservoirs and then we can calculate what is the change in entropy of the entire universe so now um, for the water even for the second case which is the B case this is B. Uh, the delta Q for the water will be the same that is 418 418.7 uh, kilojoules and similarly the change in entropy for the water is also same because the water is uh, getting heat uh, while its temperature is varying and uh, while we calculate the entropy for the uh, entropy change for the water, we have already accounted for the change in temperature that it uh, undergoes during the uh, heat transfer. So this is also same as the previous case. That is 1.307 kilojoule per kelvin. Now for the entropy change in the reservoir, we have two reservoirs. That is for the first reservoir R1 we will have mc so it is del q1 by t1 say now this will be m mc integral dt by t and that will be mc ln t2 by t1 so now mc will be temperature is also constant so we will have only delta q1 by t1 and delta q1 can be written as mc uh, t2 minus t1 so that is uh, in this case it is from uh, 273 kelvin to 323 kelvin so we have mass of the water is 1 into 4.187 into this is uh, 323 kelvin minus initial temperature of 273 kelvin so this will be half of the actual heat transfer uh, or half of the total heat transfer that is uh, 209.35 kilojoules so now delta s or the change in entropy for the first reservoir is 209.35 by, by the divided by the temperature of the first reservoir which is 323 kelvin So this is 0.648 kilojoule per kelvin and similarly uh, change in entropy for the reservoir 2 will be uh, same mc t2 by t1 or t3 by t2 something like that and then divided by the second uh, temperature of the second reservoir so this is uh, mc is uh, for 1 into 4.187 into t3 is uh, 373 kelvin minus 323 kelvin that is 40 kelvin divided by tr2 is uh, 373 so now delta is for second reservoir is Zero point five six 
go to the okay. Now, uh, the entropy change for the entire universe can be calculated as, and uh, for again for this reservoirs, uh, it is losing heat, so the entropy change will be negative. So we should account it accordingly. Now delta S for the universe is yes. delta S for the uh, water body plus delta S for the reservoir 1 plus delta S for reservoir 2. So this will be delta S for the water is the same as the previous case and that is uh, 1.307 uh, minus change in entropy for the second case that is uh, second reservoir that is uh, 0 0.648 and similarly change in entropy for the second reservoir is 0 0.561 so we can get the total change in entropy that is 0 0.098 similar to the per Kelvin so this is approximately 98 joule per Kelvin in the earlier case, we got it around 185 Joule per Kelvin and now we have got around 98 kilojoule, uh, Joule per Kelvin. So, we have reduced the uh, entropy increase of the universe by around uh, 2 uh, by half. Uh, we are reduced by half. So what we can infer, uh, infer from this is, uh, we have already seen that uh, entropy will increase, uh, change in entropy will increase when we have a, when uh, heat flows through a finite temperature difference. So uh, in the first case, in the first uh, part of the problem, we had only one thermal reservoir at uh, 373 Kelvin and we had some water body with initial temperature of 273 Kelvin. So this was uh, heated up by the single reservoir. Now in the second case, so here the delta T will be always uh, like initially it was started with 100 Kelvin and finally it became 0 Kelvin. And uh, in the second case we had two reservoirs, one at 323 Kelvin and then another at 373 Kelvin. And we had a water body at uh, 273 kel Kelvin. And heat was transferred from the uh, reservoir to the water body, and now the delta temperature is of max is only 50 Kelvin. And now, after it got uh, the water body has got uh, 323 Kelvin, this is taken to the next uh, second reservoir, first reservoir, second reservoir, and uh, so it just started with the water at a temperature of 323 Kelvin. Now, uh, temperature is transferred from the 373 Kelvin reservoir and again delta T is only 50 Kelvin. So since we have reduced the delta T by around uh, uh, by half like uh, earlier it was 100 and now it has become 50 uh, we are also there seeing some benefits in terms of uh, reduce, uh, reduced uh, increase in entropy of the universe. And now for the problem C we want to explain how water might be heated from 273 Kelvin to 373 Kelvin with almost no change in the entropy of the universe. So without any change in entropy of the universe how we can heat using a, uh, another water body. So uh, now it should be obvious that we should have uh, many number of uh, uh, reservoir. So earlier we had two and so first the delta T from 100 became 50 Kelvin. Assume we have uh, 100 thermal reservoirs like 274 Kelvin reservoir 
and then water is heated to water is heated to heated from 273 Kelvin to 274 Kelvin and now the delta T will be only 1 Kelvin and now we find another reservoir which has a temperature of 275 Kelvin and then again we increase from the water body in case from 274 Kelvin to 275 Kelvin <coughs> the, by transferring heat and the delta T is also again 1 Kelvin and if you keep on having say 100 reservoirs and then finally we reach a point where we need to have a reservoir with 373 Kelvin If you have any doubts or questions, you can unmute and ask. But otherwise, it's better to have it muted. And uh, so now, uh, if you have uh, a, a thermal reservoir at 373 Kelvin, in the last stage, we will be having water at 372 Kelvin. And then we heat it to 373 Kelvin. And by transferring heat and having the delta T will be a max of 1 Kelvin. So if you have some arrangement like this or if you have some more one more thermal reservoirs that will reduce the uh, uh, reduce the entropy increase in the universe the next problem 1 kg of ice at minus 5 degrees celsius is exposed to the atmosphere which is at uh, 20 degrees celsius the ice melts and comes into thermal equilibrium with the atmosphere Determine the entropy in case of the universe. What is the minimum amount of work necessary to convert the water back into ice at uh, minus 5 degrees Celsius? CP of ice is 2.093 kJ per kg Kelvin and the latent heat of fusion of ice is 333.3 kJ per kg. So, uh, now we have two stages or three stages of heat transfer the temperature and the say heat and yes. so initially it is at minus 5 degrees celsius and then it is heated to say 0 degrees and then it uh, has a latent heat and from so it is till this point it was ice and then till this point we had a latent heat and then again the, at this point it became a liquid and then it is heated to say 20 degrees Celsius And now I call this region as 1, 2, and 3. The total heat transfer for the entire process is C of ice into uh, temperature difference that is the final temperature was 0 and initial was minus 5 so this is final minus initial like this plus uh, mass into latent heat of ice plus mass into uh, the C of water and zero. so mass is 1 and uh, C of the ice is given as 2.093 kJ per kg Kelvin into 5 plus mass of the ice is 1 kg and the latent heat of vaporization is 333.3 sorry latent heat of fusion and plus mass is 1 and C of water is uh, you know that it is 4.187 into 
So can you calculate the overall heat transfer? So it's 427.5 Joule. Yeah. Okay, sir. Right. So now uh, to calculate the entropy, uh, we want to calculate the entropy increase for the universe. So delta S for universe. I will write U is delta s of the of the water body plus delta s for the atmosphere now we can calculate the delta s of the atmosphere delta s for atmosphere is uh, delta q by t uh, the delta q is known that is 427.5 and t is the temperature of the atmosphere so that is 20 degrees celsius and that will be 293 kelvin so we can calculate the change in entropy for the atmosphere so it is 1.45 We need to be clear with the sign. Uh, the atmosphere is losing heat to the ice or the water. Now, then the Q delta Q will be negative minus 427 for the atmosphere, and the entropy change is also negative. Now, uh, to calculate the entropy change uh, in the water body, we have three phases. So. Uh, delta s for the water water body for phase 1 is uh, you know it is delta q by t and delta q is m c d t by t and m c is m s mass is 1 and c is uh, uh, for the first phase which is for the c for the ice that is uh, 2.093 into ln of t2 by t1 final temperature by initial temperature and final temperature is 0 kelvin uh, sorry 0 degree celsius that is 273 by initial temperature is minus 5 degree celsius that is 268 so can you calculate the change in entropy for the first process It is 0 0.038 no. joule per convin. Change in entropy for the second phase is again delta Q by T. Now, during the second phase, your audio is disturbing. This is uh, delta Q by T, and for the second phase, the temperature remains constant at uh, zero degree Celsius because the latent heat of fusion is happening. So uh, now we have uh, we can write MC delta. Uh, there is no delta T here, so it is only delta Q by T T or the second phase. That is 
delta s for the second processes delta q is given by 333.3 and divided by the temperature of fusion that is 273 Kelvin. Can you calculate this? Sir, 1.22 Kelvin and similarly for the third process we will have similar to the first one so but the C value will be uh, for water C of water by ln of uh, T3 by T2 and C of water is 4.187 and ln of uh, T3 is 20 degrees Celsius that is a final temperature 20 degrees Celsius is uh, 293 Kelvin divided by the initial temperature that is 0 degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin this is 0.296 and uh, all these are positive and now delta is for the system is this delta is for the first process for the delta is for the second process this delta is for the third process and that is uh, 0.038 plus 1.22 plus 0.296 that is 1.55 Delta S for the universe is Delta S for the system plus Delta S for the surrounding or the atmosphere and uh, for the system it is 1.55 and for the atmosphere we have calculated it as minus 1.45 so the difference is 0.1 kilojoule per kilo. So this is the uh, first part of the problem. In the second part we need to calculate what is the minimum amount of arc necessary to convert the water back into ice at uh, minus 5 degrees Celsius. Cp of ice is uh, yeah, then so. Now when we want to uh, go for the reverse, say uh, assume we have a, a refrigeration cycle. And we are given some minimum mark to convert uh, the ice and uh, we have atmosphere and this is at 20 degrees Celsius and this is uh, initially at 20 degrees Celsius and then it has to go to minus 5 degrees Celsius through all the process, uh, through all the latent heat. First, uh, the sensible heat of uh, water this part sensible heat of water and then latent heat of uh, water ice uh, mixture and then let uh, sensible heat of uh, ice so now uh, we know uh, delta is for the atmosphere is say this is q h and this is q l uh, q h by t atmosphere and then the delta s for the system will be the same as the previous case that is okay 1.5 kJ per kJ and uh, for the minimum uh, work refrigeration work the 
change in entropy for the universe should be zero. So, but why transferring heat from the atmosphere to the ice to uh, to increase the temperature of the ice from minus five degrees Celsius to uh, water of twenty degrees Celsius, we had some change in entropy uh, or the increase in entropy of the universe, and that is fine. So now we are going back to ice. So we are cooling the twenty degrees Celsius water to from minus five degrees Celsius ice. And for this, we need to find the minimum work that is needed. So minimum work can be uh, uh, can be achieved only when the when the entropy change of the universe is zero. Now uh, this is known, and uh, ch change in entropy of the universe is the summation of uh, change in entropy of the system plus the surrounding plus change in entropy of the atmosphere. And uh, here this is known as zero, and the system is already known. One point five five. And now uh, the change in uh, system will be negative because earlier we heated the uh, ice to become water, and now we will remove the heat from the ice. Then it will be uh, negative of the same magnitude, uh, that is minus one point five five. And for the Atmosphere. We have just uh, did, uh, uh, wrote an expression. That is here. So then we have here Q H by T A T for the atmosphere uh, for the refrigerator. So Q H is can be from this uh, refrigeration cycle. We know Q H is summation of W min plus Q L. So that is. Um, H by T atmosphere is 1.55, and uh, Q H can be written as W min plus Q L divided by T atmosphere is equal to 1.55. Now T atmosphere is known, and Q L is also known because that is the temperature, uh, that is the heat that is taken away from the system, and that is same as the previous case. And that we have already calculated, and that is 427.425 uh, kilojoules. So here we have W min plus uh, 427.5 kilojoules divided by the uh, temperature of the atmosphere, that is 20 degrees Celsius or 293 Kelvin. So this is 1.55. So W min can be calculated as uh, 1.55 into 293. Minus four point seven point five. Twenty six point two six. Oh, twenty two point six five. Twenty six. You are getting. I got twenty eight. So this is the minimum work that is needed to convert the water at 20 degrees Celsius back to ice at uh, minus 5 degrees Celsius. Do you have any questions? Sir, that. Uh Delta S for atmosphere and delta S for uh, universe is taking negative side. Uh, right. The year the delta S for system. Ah, uh, system is negative. So when we are cooling the system, we are extracting the heat away, right? So the entropy will reduce for the system. Oh, right. If for this whole system, okay. Right. So earlier it was 20 degree ice, or so 20 degree water. This we are using some refrigeration to convert to minus 5 degree ice. So that means we are taking the heat from the water. Yes, sir. Sir, in the The, the diagram which we are drawn for the refrigeration is mm. the blue minimum, sir. That work. Uh, 
Yeah, what yeah. done by the refrigerator is W minimum, always. Not always. In the current uh, problem, we are asked to find the minimum work that is needed. So, we are considering a case where we have a minimum work. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, if we have a reversible refrigerator and then uh, uh, we do not uh, increase the entropy of the universe during the cooling down process, then we need only 26.65 kJ. But in actual, there will be some other uh, things coming up, so then the actual the, um, work will be higher than this. Oh, okay, the understood, sir. Thank you. Next problem. Uh, two identical bodies of uh, constant heat capacities are at the same initial temperature Ti. A uh, refrigerator operates between these two bodies until one body is cooled to temperature T2. If the bodies uh, remain at constant pressure and undergo no change of phase, show that the minimum amount of work needed to do this is W minus uh, Cp into Ti square by T2 plus T2 minus 2 into Ti. So uh, we have two bodies which have same CP and uh, I would say body B at high temperature and body A at low temperature and uh, there is a uh, refrigerator that operates for which some work is given and that, uh, that uh, uh, transfers heat from body A to body B and both had an initial temperature of uh, Ti. And now this will go to a final temperature of T2 and this will correspondingly go to a final temperature of T2 dash. Now we need to find uh, if the minimum work, uh, uh, we have to prove show that the minimum work uh, to be done is uh, given by this expression Cp into T i T2 and so on. So now uh, we know we can start writing the known expressions. So, if we say this is uh, Q that is taken away from the uh, sorry, it is only Q Q that is taken away from the uh, heat is taken away from the water uh, from the body A and uh, to uh, to the body P Q plus W minus is given. Now we can calculate C Q is uh, M into uh, C P into T2 minus, uh, sorry, the final minus initial, that is Ti minus T2. I am just taking the magnitude because the direction is already given uh, on the diagram. Now Q plus W can be Cp into the temperature rise by the body P that is T2 dash minus T A. So now W I know it is uh, Cp into T2 bar minus T I minus of Q, minus of Q is minus Cp into T i minus T2. So, W can be rewritten as Cp into uh, T2 dash plus T2 minus 2 T i. So, we have already almost arrived with the expression. Only thing we have to uh, we have T2 dash in the expression and that has to be converted to this one. So for this we will use the uh, second uh, thermodynamic second law principle. So we say that the change in entropy of the universe is, is zero. Only then we can uh, have the work done to be minimum. Then that will so change in entropy is given as uh, 
change in entropy of body A and change in entropy of body B. So that is for A. For A it will be, for body A it will be uh, the delta Q by D and then it will be uh, Cp into dt by d and then it will be cp into yon of uh, final temperature by initial temperature so here the final temperature is t2 by initial temperature is ti so this is the um, change in entropy for the body a and similarly change in entropy for body b will be cp into ln of final by initial temperature so final is t2 dash by initial is ti Now, uh, change in entropy of the universe is change in entropy for A plus change in entropy for B. And that will be, and this for minimum we know that it says 0. And then uh, change in entropy for A is Cp into ln T2 by Ti plus ln, oh sorry, plus Cp ln T2 dash by Ti. So now we can remove the Cp which is common then we will have ln of T2 by Ti plus ln of T2 dash by Ti which is equal to 0. Now this can be written as ln T2 into T2 dash by Ti square is equal to 0. For uh, ln of any term, say for ln x is equal to 0, we know x is should be 1. So otherwise only ln 1 is 0. Then that means t2 t, uh, into t2 dash by ti square is equal to 1. So we can find the value of t2 dash that is ti square by t2. Now we can put in this expression W min. So W min is we had Cp into T2 dash plus T2 minus 2 Ti. So T2 dash we can uh, use this expression that is Ti square by T2 plus T2 minus 2 Ti. So this is the expression of W mean um, that is also the same as just given the problem. Do you have any question? Uh, sir, in the diagram, mm -hmm. We doesn't uh, in the question it doesn't uh, give the final temperatures of the uh, bo identical bodies, sir. Uh, no, they have told that uh, T two is the final temperature. No, until it is cooled to temperature T two. So this I am taking T two is the uh, temperature final temperature of body A. So, uh, we didn't uh, do the problem by, by just taking the temperature at T1 and uh, uh, body a temperature is Ti and body temperature T1 like T1 or T2 like, like this. T1, T2 no because uh, earlier we have seen all problems which have a reservoir of uh, uh, infinite reservoir. So the temperature will not change at all. Here these two are some body with some heat capacity. So whenever you take heat, it will increase the temperature. Whenever you yeah, whenever you take heat, it will reduce the temperature. And when you put some heat, it will increase the temperature. It is not a infinite reservoir. So that is why generally uh, for infinite reservoir, we draw like this. So T1, we draw open. So that means it is infinite. Right. And now we have a finite temperature body, so that is a body A at initial temperature and finite temperature uh, finite body. 
you are understanding the difference because here yeah, whatever no matter whatever uh, temperature uh, heat to transfer the temperature will not change at all for example uh, ocean atmospheric air these kind of things here it can be some uh, 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 bottle of water uh, close room Small close room, something like that. So in this case, we have to suppose both initial and final temperature. Ah yes, because uh, it is a finite body, so the whatever heat you take will amount to some change in temperature. Sir, this uh, delta S is equal to zero, sir. Ah yes. So entropy of the system is zero when we are uh, reaching to absolute temperature. Entropy of the system, yeah, yeah. Absolute zero Kelvin, entropy will be zero. But we are not dealing with those things here. You have a general question or uh, some question from this problem? No, sir, from, from this... General. Uh, ah. from here, we don't consider... Only change in entropy is considered to be zero. Okay. We write change in entropy should be zero. We can only calculate change in entropy. Yes, but it's not mentioned in the question, no, sir. So they have mentioned that minimum amount of work that is needed, right? So for doing minimum work, you would have uh, gone through the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, only when the entropy changes zero, then you will have you will approach a Carnot engine or the reverse Carnot engine where uh, you will have minimum work to uh, for the refrigerator or the heat engine or maximum work output from the heat engine so here we are not assuming that uh, this delta s is equal to zero due to the uh, for, for the minimum amount of work needed not for uh, absolute absolute temperature ah no no absolute temperature means then it is we will write as s is equal to zero we write only delta S is zero. Right, right, right. Uh, that delta S right, sir. Ah, so that is why we always write delta S for changing. Even entropy, some people define uh, entropy as such is not defined, only change in entropy is defined as heat transferred by heat temperature, something like that. Uh, what did all just say? Or can you repeat again? No, uh, some, some authors will write uh, entropy, like uh, entropy as such is not defined. Only change in entropy can be given by uh, heat transfer by the temperature, something like that. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, we always deal with delta S and uh, maybe in steam tables you will be able to find the value of uh, entropy. So, that also they will take some uh, uh, reference at some point say 0 degree uh, uh, 0 degree celsius will be some value and uh, from there we will keep on calculating only the change in entropy for our problems and uh, if you change the reference and you offset all the entropy value in the uh, steam table also it doesn't matter because all our expressions will deal around only with the delta s value Okay, sir. Understood, sir. Okay. Next problem. Uh, air is compressed in a car engine from 22 degrees Celsius and uh, 95 kilopascal in a reversible and adiabatic manner. If the compression ratio is V1 by uh, V1 by V2 of the engine is 8, determine the final temperature of air. So this is a simple problem. We know T2 by T1 is V1 by V2 power gamma minus 1. And since it is given as a reversible adiabatic process, we know that uh, we cannot we can take gamma minus 1 and so like PV power for gamma is equal to constant. And now T2 is uh, T1 into V1 by V2 power gamma minus 1. So 
T1 is 22 degrees Celsius that is 295 Kelvin 295 into V1 by V2 is 8 power gamma minus 1 is 0 0.4 so we can calculate so this is 677.7 Kelvin and that is 404.7 so this is the final temperature. I hope this problem is clear. Uh, so before this, I will solve this. Uh, fluid undergoes a reversible adiabatic compression from 0.5 megapascal. 0.2 meter cube to 0 0.05 meter cube according to the law PV power 1.3 is equal to constant. So this is also a reversible adiabatic uh, compression and uh, so now determine the change in enthalpy, internal energy and entropy and the heat transfer and work transfer during the process. So here we know P1 is 0.5 mega Pascal, V1 is 0.2 meter cube and V2 is 0 0.05 meter cube and PV power 1.3 is equal to constant determine the enthalpy. So and we are told that uh, it is an reversible adiabatic process that means there is no heat transfer Q is equal to 0. Now to find the change in enthalpy, we have delta H is H2 minus H1. Or, you know, this is, uh, you know, H is Q plus PV, and delta H should be delta U plus uh, P delta V plus V delta P. Now we know Q is given by delta U plus P V, P delta V. So that means this is 0 since the problem. So delta H will be left with only V into delta P. So that is uh, should be written carefully. So T H is given by V into T P. So now we have to integrate to get the actual delta H. Delta H is equal to integral V dP. So now we need to get the expression for V to uh, substitute here. Uh, v as a function of pressure. So we are given PV power 1.3 is equal to constant. Uh, so PV power 1.3 is equal to constant. So now V is equal to that constant divided by P power 1 by 1.3 so then we will have delta h is equal to uh, dp by p and okay, we also have the power here uh, so we will have constant power 1 by 1.3 1 outside and here we will have dp by p power now if you integrate this you will have uh, so when we integrate integrate x power n dx is equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 Similarly, delta H will be C power 1 by 1.3 into uh, this will be uh, this is already uh, P power 1 minus 1 by 1.3 divided by 1 minus 1 by 1.3.
so since it is in denominator uh, we we'll, i take it to numerator it will be the power will be minus uh, 1 by 2.3 okay so now i will have uh, uh, I can write uh, this 1.3 as n, so it will be n into constant power 1 by n into p power uh, n minus 1 divided by n divided by, I will have n minus 1 by and now <coughs> c can be, and now this has to be integrated uh, within the limits p to, to p power. now I have n c power 1 by n and here I will have p2 n minus n 1 by n minus p1 n minus 1 by n divided by n minus 1 now we know c the value of c so c can be written as p1 v1 power 1.3 or p2 V2 power 1.3. So that is m into I would uh, so I can multiply this with c power 1 by n p2 power n minus 1 by n. Right. Similarly, c power 1 by n p2 power n minus 1 by n. The whole by n minus 1. So I will have delta h says n by m minus 1. So for c, uh, for the first c I will put uh, p2 v2 power 1.3 and for second I will have p1 okay, sorry, p2 power 1.3 the second term I can write P1 V1 power 1 uh, power n the whole power 1 by n into P2 power n minus 1 by n so this is P1 uh, okay. the other terms are already taken care so now I will have n by n minus 1 into the P2 power n and the whole power 1 by n will become V2 and similarly P2 will also become uh, yeah, P2 into V2 minus P1 V1 this is what we have. Now we need to know the value of P1 V1 and P2 V2. So for the second state we know V2 but P2 is not known which can be calculated using the expression PV power n is equal to constant. So we have P 1 v1 power 1.3 is equal to p2 v2 power 1.3 so p2 is uh, p1 v1 by v2 power 1.3 so p2 so p1 is 0.5 mega pascal 0.5 and uh, v1 by v2 is uh, 0 0.2 by 0 0.05 0 0.2 by 0 0.05 whole power 1.3 can you calculate the value of P2? Since 3.03, 3.03. So now we can calculate delta H, and that is uh, 1.3 by 0.3 into uh, P2 is 3.03, 3.03 into 10 power 6 into V2 is uh, 0.05 minus P1 is. 0.5 mega pascal 0.5 into 10 power 6 and then into v1 v1 is 0.2 so 
so can you calculate the value of delta h Sir, it's coming as thirty nine six five double zero. Six five double zero. This makes two, so that is. Change in enthalpy is calculated. We need to calculate the other terms. Change in internal energy. So we have this H2 minus H1 and H2 is H2 plus H2 plus H2 minus H1 minus H1 minus H1 minus H1. Should be U two minus U one plus U two minus U one. Now delta U can be taken on one side, then we have delta H plus U one minus U two. So delta H is one. That is three nine. Three ninety six five hundred plus the other terms. P one is point uh, five into ten power six into V one is point point zero five. So the point two minus P two is three point zero three mega pascal. So point zero three into ten power six into uh, V two V two is Point zero five. Okay, calculate the value of internal energy. Okay. Sir, it's thirty four. Five double zero. Thirty four five double zero. Yes sir. Three forty seven kilo joules. Next is uh, we need to calculate the uh, change in entropy. We transfer and not transfer. So now we know Q is equal to delta U plus uh, W, and uh, they have already mentioned that uh, there is no heat transfer, and this is also given as TBS. So this means change in entropy is also zero. Now from this expression, we will have W is equal to minus delta U, and that will be minus three forty five kilo. Here I am getting sorry. You had three ninety six five hundred, but I am getting two twenty three one sixty six. Can you just uh, check once? Sure, sir.
सर इज थर्टी नाइन सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो सर So, uh, you have put 1.3 divided by 0.3, and within brackets 3.03 into 10 power 6 into 0.05 minus 0.5 into 10 power 6 into 0.2, right? I'm getting these answers just by um, just marking out. Please have a look. I will come back in a few minutes. Yes, sir. It is. Uh Did you check? Uh, are you still getting the same? Or? No, sir. I am getting same as you, sir. Ah, I got twenty one double two. Ah, okay.
then we can go on to the next problem. Do you have any questions? Sir, here one minus uh, one by one point three, sir. For simplification, we are taking in n, sir. Ah, yes, yes. I am just taking 1.3 as n. So, it will be generalized to thing. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. All right, sir. The next problem, three identical finite bodies of constant heat capacity are at temperatures 300, 300 and 100 Kelvin. If no work or heat is supplied from outside, what is the highest temperature to which any one of the bodies can be raised by the operation of heat engines or refrigerators? So we have three bodies, say body A is at uh, 300 Kelvin, and body B is at 100 Kelvin and then another body C at 300 Kelvin. Now we need to operate some refrigerator or a heat engine or uh, some things in between them so that we need to raise the body of at least uh, uh, one we need to find what is the maximum uh, uh, temperature by which one of the bodies can be to which one of the bodies can be reached and there is no external work uh, done to the system and there is no external heat transfer in and out of the system only these three bodies are what we have so one arrangement is like we can have a body A of 300 Kelvin and we can run a uh, heat engine which gives some work output. So this is Q1 is heat is transfer and uh, this is uh, okay, this is a finite body and uh, it transfers to a body uh, B at 100 Kelvin and this heat transfer is say Q2 and then it runs in refrigerator which uh, heats the body at uh, 300 Kelvin body C and then it also transfers some heat back to uh, so this is Q3 and okay. so this is Q3 and this is Q4 can say that uh, this will this both uh, the heat engine uh, operates until the body uh, heat bodies A and B are at same temperature right so then we assume that uh, final temperature of this is Tf and this is also Tf so maybe the Tf can be somewhere in the, uh, between 300 Kelvin and 100 Kelvin so assume 200 Kelvin and until to uh, both the bodies reach the uh, temperature 200 Kelvin both will be uh, work, uh, the heat engine will work, uh, will, op will operate and it will generate a work output and after it reaches the temperature uh, there is no more work output and now we cannot operate the refrigerator further and uh, so that is the final temperature Tf to which it is reached and uh, this uh, now we uh, run a refrigerator so this will increase the temperature of this body to uh, say Tf dash now we know the for uh, any reversible for to get the maximum work output and to supply maximum work uh, to the uh, maximum work output from the heat engine W and uh, using that W to increase the uh, uh, heat transfer Q4 
to the maximum we need to have uh, the process to be uh, reversible and that means the with the no production in entropy for the universe and this uh, now we are only dealing with these uh, three bodies that means the change in entropy of the universe can be reduced to change in entropy of the body A plus change in entropy of body B and change in entropy of body C these three should become uh, zero now <coughs> uh, we can start writing the expression for individual bodies uh, for body A uh, the change in entropy will be between uh, 300 Kelvin to the final of Tf so we assume a, a heat capacity of a C so before that try the basic expression so we, I assume uh, this to be C into dt by t so it will become C into ln of uh, final temperature by initial so final is Tf and initial is 300 And similarly, for uh, entropy change for body B will be C into ln of final temperature by initial that is final is Tf and initial is 100. And similarly, for entropy change for the body C is C into ln of final temperature by initial. So here final is Tf dash by initial is 300 Kelvin. Now, we want to say the uh, total change in entropy is zero, then we will have C into ln of Tf by 300 plus C into ln of Tf by 100 plus C into ln of Tf dash by 300 all should be equal to zero. Now we can take C common and then it, it can be uh, cancelled out then we can uh, take uh, all the three lawns to a single lawn by multiplying the uh, values so then we will have lawn of tf by 300 into uh, tf by 100 into tf dash by 300 so everything will be zero so that means this is lawn one so that means uh, the terms inside the lawn function is one so that is three Tf into Tf into Tf dash by 300 into 300 into 100 is equal to 1. So this can be written as Tf square into Tf dash is equal to uh, is 9 into 10 power 6 right now we will uh, uh, yeah, write the expression using the first law now uh, when we can write the expression for q1 so for q1 the heat transfer is c into the initial temperature minus final temperature and so this q1 similarly q2 will be uh, 100 minus uh, our c into tf minus 100 so since the direction is already taken care in the, uh, in the diagram I am writing the magnitude alone similarly q4 will be c into uh, the final will be Tf dash minus 300 and uh, Ts all should be the same right I mean the can you say the summation of all these are zero because there is no other uh, heat uh, transferred from the external thing so uh, that means q1 should be equal to q2 plus q4 because we are taking some heat from source uh, a and then that is given to a body b and also body c so the heat transfer from a that is q1 should be equal to q2 plus q4 
now we will have uh, c into 300 minus tf is equal to c into tf minus 100 plus c into tf dash minus 300 so remain the c values we will have 300 minus tf is equal to tf minus 100 plus tf dash minus 300 then we will have 2 tf plus tf dash is equal to so tf dash is equal to 700 minus 2 tf and we also have this expression uh, then substituting this there so we have tf square into 700 minus 2 tf is equal to 9 into 10 power 6 so now this can be solved using the calculator So that you can also directly solve using this calculator using the solve function. If not, if you want to, otherwise this can be um, solved iteratively. So uh, intuitively we can say that TF can be somewhere between 300 and 100. So we can take an average value that is TF is equal to 200. Then we can calculate what is the LHS. So now LHS is uh, 12 into 10 power 6. So now I you cannot directly say if you have to increase or decrease. Uh, I will just try with uh, 180. Then we have LHS as 11.016 into 10 power 6. So now we know we should increase, we should decrease the value of TF to reach uh, 9 into 10 power 6. So then I try with uh, 150, then we get uh, LHS equal to 9 into 10 power 6. So that is the correct value because it is same as RHS. So now TF is found to be 150 Kelvin, and then we can calculate TF dash that is 700 minus 2 into TF that is 2 into 150 and that So when we had these three bodies, uh, we use uh, one uh, 300 Kelvin body and 100 Kelvin body to uh, run a heat engine, and that was generated in our uh, work output W, and that was used for a uh, used into a refrigeration cycle and uh, heat up a body at uh, C. Now uh, the <coughs> final temperature of body A and B will become 150 Kelvin while the value of the temperature of body C will become 400 Kelvin. Do you have any questions? Sir, then what will be temperatures of A and B, sir? Yeah, A and B will become 150. We say, we said it is TF, no? So TF we have found that it is 150. Both will become 150. Right, sir. Sir, uh, this in in this diagram, sir, that how is the heat engine is uh, connected with refrigeration, sir? Uh, by a work transfer, the work uh, that is obtained from heat engine is sent to the refrigerator. It's used to or run the refrigeration system and transfer 
सर कैन वी डू सेपरेटली सर फर्स्ट टेकिंग हीट इंजन एंड देन टेकिंग रिफ्रिजरेशन लाइक दिस देन व्हाट इज बी द डिफरेंस actually when you have refrigerator there is a q3 element also which is uh, indirectly taken care of and uh, that will uh, take uh, heat from the 100 kelvin body to and send back to 300 kelvin body right right sir yeah so this it is a couple of problem you cannot uh, individually solve chalo chalo ओके सर अंडरस्टूड सर सो देन इफ यू सॉल्व इंडिविजुअली नो देन यू हैव टू डू इट आइटरेटिवली सो फर्स्ट फॉर एग्जांपल यू हैड 300 एंड 100 व्हाइल ट्रांस व्हाइल यू ट्रांसफर हीट मे बी यू गेट अ फाइनल ऑफ 200 केल्विन एंड देन यू गॉट अ वर्क आउटपुट ऑफ सम वर्क डब्ल्यू 1 and now this w1 can run the refrigerator and now that can uh, take heat from this body you know here it was 200 it became 200 so it can extract heat from this and give to the 300 kelvin body body c so while it takes the heat uh, from 200 it will again drop to say 150 or uh, something or say 180 now again the body a is in 200 kelvin and body b is in 100 180 kelvin so now again you can run an heat engine and then extract work out so first we have to calculate the overall temperature and work done hmm yeah okay sir right sir If you have any questions, you can uh, in general uh, we can discuss now, or we can close the session. No questions from my side, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ragman also don't have any questions. So, Ragman, do you have any questions? No, sir. Understood, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Then we will see in the next session. Thank you.